Hello guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be answering your travel questions. So I posted on my Instagram if anyone had any travel related questions for me because I want to make a Q&A sort of video where I answer people's travel questions. If you want to be involved in any of my future videos, make sure that you're following me so you don't miss out on anything. Also, you should be following me right now because there's probably a bunch of fun stuff from my backpacking trip being posted like right now. If you don't know who I am, my name is Rachel. I make videos on fashion, travel, and environmentalism. If you like any of those things, you should consider subscribing to me. But let's get on into the video. Okay, question one. What is your all-time dream destination to travel to? This one is interesting because if you would have asked me this a couple years ago, I would have said something different. But I really want to go to Japan. I think it's because my current partner really wants to go to Japan. And so their love and excitement of it is kind of like rubbed off on me. Japan is a country where a lot of people close to me were talking about for years and years. But I was like, eh, you know, if I go there, that's really cool. Or if not, it's okay. But now I'm like, I simply must go to Japan. <laughs> My partner's favorite meal is ramen and my favorite meal is sushi. So I just think we would be in absolute heaven. We're hoping to go there in 2025, so stay tuned for that. But that is my all-time like dream travel destination currently. Ever since I backpacked Southeast Asia too, I just love like being in that continent. That was my first time in Asia, and so I had a really good time and I just want to keep doing more Asian countries. Okay, next question. Top three places that I've been. Okay, Vietnam is totally up there now. I loved being in Vietnam. I was in Vietnam for about three weeks last year. I specifically really liked the north of Vietnam. I did the Hai Giang Loop, which is a three-day motorcycle trip in like the northern Vietnam mountains. I did a hike in Sapa, which is another like northern Vietnamese city. And it's just beautiful. I loved Hanoi. I feel like Hanoi is one of my favorite places. I love the hustle and bustle of it. I loved the food in Vietnam. I love the people. I just, I really liked it. I also really liked Hoi An because when I was in Hoi An, I got like tailor-made clothing for me, which was super fun. And that's when you get to do those little like boat rides and stuff. And yeah, so I would say Vietnam, specifically the North and Hoi An of Vietnam I really liked. My second would probably be Iceland. I really liked Iceland. I went there back in like 2017, but the views were just unreal. Iceland's the only place where like, I feel like I was in pure shock. Iceland, I said it once, I'll say it again. It's like a magical fairyland. I loved it there. And my third place is probably Ireland. I really liked Ireland. I've been to Ireland twice. I really loved the people there. I just felt really warm and like at home when I was in Ireland, and so, I don't know, maybe uh, in another life I lived there, but I really enjoy Ireland as well. So those are probably my top three. This is making me realize, truthfully, what I love when I go travel, which is just those unique experiences that you have and seeing natural scenery and stuff like that. Those are my favorites. I feel like Ireland, Vietnam, and Iceland all have just beautiful natural scenery, and so maybe that's why I love them so much. <laughs> okay, next question. I got a lot of questions about money. Uh, what do you do to save enough money for travel for long periods of time? Girl, how do you afford to travel so long at once? I feel like that's like a complicated thing. I have made videos on like how I save money and like how to save money while you're traveling. So I'll link them at the top. But essentially for me, it's like a work hard, play hard situation. Like when I'm home in Canada, I'm making sure that I'm like working multiple jobs. I have currently like three jobs that I work and my jobs also have to be flexible so that when I leave I can leave and then I can come home and work them so there's that and I just work a lot when I'm at home. I think also when you're traveling for long periods of time like my last trip I put all my stuff in storage so I wasn't paying any rent. This trip I'm not giving up my apartment so I will be paying my rent and traveling so that's gonna be a challenge for sure. Here's the thing, when I was in second year university I had like this deep soul searching moment and then subsequently an epiphany after it where I just kind of thought what do I want out of life? Like what are things I want to do with my life and what will bring me joy and what will make me you know feel fulfilled and happy and when I thought about it long and hard what I came to the conclusion of for myself was traveling. And so ever since I made that cognitive decision when I was in second year of university, 
I, ever since then, have just organized my life to fit that. Like, I was like, this is the priority. How do I organize my life so I can do this? The jobs I picked, the career I went into, everything I did was so that I could save money and travel more. Like, I lived at home for university so I could save. Now, I've recently started making money online by doing stuff like this, so your support and watching my videos really helped me as well. So, I wanna just keep the ball rolling with that level of abundance and hopefully it'll just keep going. But essentially, it was just, you know, all those years ago, thinking this is my goal, this is what I want to do, and then rearranging essentially everything in my life so that I could do that more. Obviously not for everyone, but that's kind of like what I decided I wanted to do with my life, and so that's how I did it. I'm also just really diligent with money when I'm at home, like I'm not spending a lot of money on like food, I cook at home, and all those regular like money saving tips that you hear. I try to do hobbies with my friends that I can save money at. I like work at my yoga studio so that I can get a free membership. I just do a lot of stuff like that. I'm not a financial influencer, but like I hope that little tidbit of information kind of helped bring clarity to how I travel so much. Okay, favorite place that I would recommend? Pai. Pai in Thailand. Pai is such an amazing spot. It's a bit of a journey to get there, but it's such a great place for backpackers. I know that's not like somewhere quick that you can access, but I really like Thailand. Like, I would recommend people visit Thailand, especially if you're like beginning backpacking or you're beginning solo travel. Thailand was really easy to like travel all the way throughout. Like, it was really traveler friendly. So, I would recommend going to Thailand and specifically Pai in the north and Koh Tao in the south. What do you feel has been the safest place you've traveled to? I feel like Vietnam was super safe. Like I always felt really safe in Vietnam. I remember being in like Da Lot and just feeling super safe. One point in time I went out to get myself some like pho when I was wanting some soup and you know, I was walking around really late at night and I kind of got a little bit lost making my way back to my hostel and I was literally like in a deserted like alleyway at one point in Vietnam and I felt super safe. Literally no one bothered me. I feel like everyone loves tourists there so everyone's super friendly. I didn't really feel the need to worry about, you know, being robbed or something happening to me in Vietnam. Everyone was just typically very helpful. All this to say, I felt super safe in Vietnam. Where did you travel first solo? Okay, so the first time I traveled solo, being on an airplane by myself would be when I flew to go visit my friend in the Czech Republic. And that was probably in like 2018, I think. Then I met up with my friend and I was there with her. The first time I like traveled solo like by myself i got a little taste of it one time when i went to go visit my friend in ireland again traveled by myself to go meet her in ireland but then the last couple days i had of my trip i decided to spend like a day by myself in dublin and so that was my first like little taste of like i am fully by myself right now for 24 hours and then after that my first like full trip that was solo by myself fully was oh my gosh I need to like scroll back in my my YouTube videos <laughs> it's a good thing I make these videos because I'm very forgetful clearly but yeah the first country that I did like solo like a trip that I was by myself for multiple days was when I was in the Czech Republic in 2019 the first time I went to the Czech Republic was like earlier than that. It was like 2017 or 16. And then the second time I went to the Czech Republic was when I was backpacking Europe and I was meeting up with friends along the way, but the Czech Republic was the only place that I like wasn't meeting up with a friend in. I was supposed to meet up with a friend, but then it just kind of like the plans fell through. I just booked a hostel and made the most of it and had a really good time. So I feel like that would be my first like solo moment. I feel like I like how I did it. It was kind of staggered. Like I built up my little solo traveling confidence, you know? <laughs> okay, next question. Have you ever felt unsafe traveling solo as a female? Yes, I definitely have. I think some places are a little more like questionable than others and it is hard when you're a woman because I feel like as a woman sometimes people don't see you the same way that they see men. For the most part, I try to keep my wits about me and when I'm in a place that I know is unsafe, I try to eliminate as many like 
potential safety threats as I can, but sometimes you just find yourself in unsafe situations by accident. That time when I was wandering around in Vietnam could have been potentially unsafe, however it wasn't. I think the most recent unsafe moment that I can remember is when I was in Cambodia. Cambodia is somewhere that people say not to travel from city to city at nighttime. It's better to be in one spot and travel during the daytime. I found myself on a really long bus. The bus was like longer than it said it was gonna be online. It was just me. I was actually, I didn't feel super unsafe. Like at first, even though this sounds like a weird situation, I got into the bus, no one spoke English. It was one of those like smaller vans and it was like me and just like maybe like six other Cambodian men. And I didn't feel unsafe just yet because I feel like, again, people in Cambodia are super nice, super friendly. Where I started to feel unsafe was like when it was getting dark out and I wasn't at my hostel yet and we had to like get off of one bus and transfer to another bus and they were like, oh, you like come on this bus and I was just hoping that like they were getting me the right spot. I kept trying to like show them my phone like this is where I need to be. I remember I was like right down the street from my hostel at one point and I was just like, this is where I need to be, but the traffic was so busy that we like pulled over to the side of the road for a while. It was a whole thing. So I definitely felt unsafe in that moment because I'm just like, are they gonna get me where I need to go? Am I gonna be like stranded and left to my own like in the middle of the street with all my belongings? Thankfully, they were all very nice people and they weren't doing anything sketchy. They just couldn't speak English to let me know what the plan was, but we had to wait somewhere until the traffic subsided and then they got me where I needed to be. And then the walk to my hostel wasn't too long at all. Thankfully as well, I was in a big city too. So it wasn't like I was in a secluded area. So that was great. What are your most important travel accessories and essentials? I would say tissues because you never know when you're gonna be somewhere that doesn't have toilet paper or you need to blow your nose or you need to wipe something. I would say a day bag, like something that has enough room that you can fit a good amount of things in, whether you're like going to the beach, you wanna fit your towel, your book, all that jazz in there. Specifically a day bag that has comfy straps. I used to try to travel with like a drawstring and it just, it's not the vibe guys. Don't do the drawstring bag, don't do it. Something else is like earphones. I really like to listen to podcasts and music. But also when I'm looking up like directions when I'm walking, I like to have one earphone in so that I can like be aware of my surroundings but also hear the directions. But yeah, I also made a video just about like things that you should bring on every single trip that you go on. So check out that video if you haven't already. That kind of talks about like my important travel accessories and things that I bring on any single trip, not only a backpacking trip, but any trip. How do you navigate transit in different cities? Transit is hard. Like, I'm not even a person who confidently can navigate like the transit system in Toronto all the time. I would say the best way I navigate transit is using apps like Google Maps and just like the Maps app on your phone. There's actually an option you can click for transit and it kind of like outlines perfectly like different transit routes you can take. I like to use that and then I also like to keep an eye on my phone while I'm riding the bus to make sure I'm actually on the right bus that I need to get on and I'm going the right direction and you know what I mean? It's also something you can show your bus driver if you're really confused or lost and it's something universal like if a bus has a letter and a number on it like A1, B1, like even if you don't speak the same language you can show someone like I'm looking for this bus. I would say just using like Google Maps or the Maps app on your phone and just being aware of your surroundings and asking for help when you need it. There's no shame in asking for help. Make sure you're asking the right people, like preferably people who work there. You don't wanna just be asking anyone for help because you don't wanna make yourself look vulnerable, but ask for help when you need it because transit is a great way to save money when you're in a new city. And like there's no way you're gonna be a master of every like city that you go to transit wise. What are the safest hostels that you've been to? Oh my gosh, I've stayed at so many amazing hostels. The safest hostel, I feel like I felt safe in almost all of my hostels. I feel the most safe when hostels like have someone at the front desk 24 hours and then also rooms that lock. Those ones I feel the most safe in. Most recently I stayed at the Lost Inn in Lisbon and it had like a lot of key cards that you had to get through to get to where you're going. Anywhere that like you have to wear a wristband too is great because then you can see those people aren't a part of your hostel. Don't let them in. But yeah, I think the better question is like, 
what hostels have I not felt safe in? Because I feel like I feel safe in all my hostels, to be honest. What brand of luggage do you recommend? Now, I don't use luggage all the time. I actually have my luggage here because I'm going on kind of like a bougie trip for my friend's wedding. So I'm trying to decide if I want to just bring my tiny little suitcase, which I can probably fit everything in, or if I'm going to need a little bit more room because I am a bridesmaid and bring like maybe my medium-sized luggage. But let me grab it. Here is my luggage that like never gets used anymore now that I'm a backpacking girly. I definitely recommend having a hard shell luggage because then if your luggage gets like banged or scraped up, like it's gonna be fine what's inside of it. I also recommend getting a luggage that's like a darker color. Mine's like a darker gray, so it won't show the scuff marks or the dirt as well. My brand that I have for my luggage is a Samsonite luggage. Uh, that's like a pretty reputable brand. So Samsonite makes some good things, but now, since then, because I've literally had this luggage for years and years, there have been so many like new companies coming out that look so cool, like Away seems like a cool one. Now there's like luggages that lock by themselves, like super safe luggages. I really like the chic ones that have like the big locks instead of the zippers, because I've been told that apparently people can break through the zippers even if you have a lock on it. I don't know. I don't know, guys. All I can say for luggage recommendations is Get something that's a hard shell so it's going to protect your stuff inside. What is the scariest part of traveling alone and how do you prevent that? I think the scariest part of traveling alone is not always knowing exactly where you're going and having other people potentially take advantage of that, of your vulnerability and your ignorance. I'm thinking when I first land in a city and I'm coming out of the airport and trying to figure out like my SIM card and how I'm going to get to my hostel. I'm also thinking like times where I'm trying to find my hostel when I get into a city and I'm walking there or just navigating any city that you don't know. There are definitely going to be people who will take advantage of tourists in that situation. So I would say I prevent that by making sure I'm looking at my route before I leave my house. I try to also avoid that by making sure my phone battery is charged and I have a SIM card and a data plan that I can look up something or call someone if needed. I try to avoid that by like traveling with people. If I'm walking somewhere late at night, I don't typically go out late at night by myself. I try to make some friends and maybe go with them. And like I mentioned before with like my earphones, I will keep one earphone in so that I can be aware of my surroundings and I'm not staring at my phone when I'm looking up directions. Those sorts of things sort of like mitigate like the scariness that comes with traveling. So it's, yeah, I hope that helps. It's not super scary, but you just have to be like on guard. I also find something I do is like having our RBF because I feel like when you're really happy, like that's more, you're more approachable and people might take advantage of that. But if you're just kind of, you know, me mugging, people aren't gonna mess with you. You're gonna look confident. You're gonna look like you know what you're doing, even if you don't. <laughs> Southeast Asia buses and transport. Do not be nervous. I literally used the website one to go Asia for every single intercity transport that I did. And it was so easy and it was so reliable and I never had any issues. That is like truly the best place to book, I think. Don't wait until super last minute. I know your hostel can kind of help you out and kind of can help figure things out, but some places fill up really quickly, like that train ride from Bangkok to Chiang Mai. So making sure that you book things in advance when you can and booking on one to go Asia really helps. And it was just, it was always great, to be honest. Even when I was having that scary moment in Cambodia when I didn't know where I was and no one spoke English, I still got to where I needed to be. I, I was still, it all worked out. Transport in between cities, it's really just doing your research. Like certain places like Chiang Mai, for example, they have the red truck collective taxis. Other places might have like tuk-tuks and then it's all about just knowing how much is a good rate. I liked getting the Uber app or the Grab app is what they call it in Asia and that way even if I wasn't using Grab to get from point A to point B, it gave me an idea of how much a ride should be so that I could kind of like negotiate with a taxi driver an appropriate amount and they wouldn't just be like, oh this is how much it is. Even if you're not going to use Grab, use Grab to get a good idea of like a good rate. And also make sure you agree on a price before you leave so that they don't try to mess around with you. When I was in Bali, someone tried to mess with me and like change the price and I was like, no. It's all about the confidence and standing true in your firm answer. <laughs> okay, last question. How do you plan your route slash which cities if you're going to many countries in one region? 
I did film a video talking about like how I plan my trips. When I was talking in that video, I kind of explained how I like to look at things on a map to see logistically which makes the most sense for order wise. And then also like looking up blog posts and seeing what people recommend and looking at other people's route and seeing if that will work for me and seeing if I want to follow it or tweak it in any way. And then also just doing your research and making sure like this is a city you actually want to go to and visit. Is it just a city that everyone goes to and is popular? Or is there something there that you genuinely want to see? Doing your research beforehand and getting an idea of like what to do in each city will help you decide that. If I'm doing multiple countries and I'm trying to decide which country to start with, I'll either look at like which country is the cheapest to fly into. Like if I'm doing somewhere in Europe, there's obviously places that have way bigger airports and they're typically cheaper. And if I'm doing somewhere in like Southeast Asia, which all of the flights are going to be equally as expensive from where I live in Canada, I kind of look at like other people's route and think about the different countries I want to do and kind of think about an order that makes sense in that way. Yeah, thank you so much for writing in guys. Like this was a really fun video to do and I couldn't have done it without people writing in on my Instagram. Make sure you're following me on Instagram so you don't miss if I do something like this again. That's everything for this video and I will see you next Sunday. Bye guys.